Edward from sonsofgod.com. It's November 26, 2012. I just wanted to post this short meditation. Uh, it's based on a few emails I've recently received and something I just wanted to explore a little bit further. So much of what we wrote, I have written about in the book, concerns the ability to see. That everything that is unfolding in the earth evolves around the ability of the sun to truly see and discern rightly. I've had several over the years ask for us to pray for them, that the Lord might bring them into the sight and the, 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 the perception that they so long for. And I wanted to just talk about this season that we're in in the past years we would always talk about this time as what we would call the dark months October, November, December for pretty much and you would say well, well Edward why would these be the dark months are these not the time of celebrating Christmas the birth of Christ and, and whatnot well to many of you who are true scholars of the word you know that the origin of Christmas, uh, the spirit behind Christmas, is anything but uh, godly, anything but uh, anointed and ordained of God. Uh, it has nothing to do with the birth of Christ or the timing of the birth of Christ. Um, and that is something that, um, if this is new teaching for you, you may want to uh, look more further into some of the writings. Alexander Hislop wrote a book, The Two Babylons, very insightful as far as what happened back in the days of the Roman Empire and the merging of paganism and Christianity at that time and what evolved out of it. And you might say, well, but I still, we still believe in God during the Christmas season and and that's what we do our you know how we focus our faith and certainly there's nothing wrong with that but you must understand there is a whole spirit world that is in operation and it's the spirit world to which you have come it is a spirit world that you wrestle and fight with and are dealing with so it's not what it appears nor has it ever been what it appears so back to what we would call the dark months. Uh, aside from uh, as far as uh, uh, Christmas or the spirit of Saturnalia, which is associated to the Christmas season, uh, or um, the uh, you know, Halloween, the, the uh, what they call that uh, all, all Saints Hallowed or something to that nature, none of that in and of itself would constitute what we would concern ourselves with as the dark months. They are just times and seasons that are uh, uh, celebrated by mankind in mankind's unawareness of the truth and what truly is uh, uh, unfolding in the spirit world. But what we find, of course, during this time it's a time of family gathering. It's a time of celebrating feasts. It's a time of Thanksgiving uh, at uh, November 25th in the United States. Um, so you find that it's a time families get together. Uh, perhaps they haven't seen themselves, one another in, in many months or years. And so they get to, they come together to share these holiday times. So the dark months evolve out of what I would call these times of gatherings, uh, uh, relationships that um, sometimes are uh, brought back to light. So the point that I'm driving towards is not about the times and seasons of Christmas and All, Sal All Hallows' Eve. It's not about family gatherings um, and whatnot, but it's about understanding what bonds are. 
you've read our book, then you'll know we've gone over that subject innumerable times. And yet, it is something that is at the crux of everything concerning the release of the sons. And it's something that we cannot take lightly and say, oh, well, I understand. And, and then just figure you've done your due diligence. Because the truth of the function of bonds and relationship in a believer's life goes much, much deeper than what you see on the surface, which you might initially discern uh, in uh, familiar relationships that might uh, be a concern. You have to understand in the scriptures it talks about be not yoked together with unbelievers. Uh, we need to understand that bonds basically yoke people together. Um, they're like cords that tie, cords that bind. And consequently, uh, so much of what God's sons carry, it, they carry by virtue of bonds, which, um, if you've read our teaching about transference, they kind of go hand in hand. Bonds create a conduit, a cord, from one individual to another, through which transference, both spiritual, soul, can, can be conveyed. The oppressions of one conveyed to another very easily. The deadness of one conveyed to another. The blindness of one conveyed to another. And of course the flip side is what Christ did when he died on the cross. The positive conveyed to those who believe in Christ. So that's the positive side of what Christ, you know, in how transference can work. But the biggest problem that we see for God's sons as a whole is the issue of bonds, is their lack of understanding what bonds are, of them doing a cursory uh, approach to it and then figure they understand it, and yet they've truly not even scratched the surface. So that, that becomes the, 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 axel, the axis point. Someone says, I want to see I want to be able to discern. I want to know the voice of the Lord. I want to see the deep things of God. It will never happen without which a deep work of the severing ties of bonds happen in a believer's life. The kingdom is coming, but it will not, it will not be uh, uh, initially visible with signs that you can say, oh, look low here, low here, I see it, it's happening. It will not. It will only be visible to the eye that is able to see, to discern, and to know. So the greatest problem that we see is still the lack of understanding of what bonds are and how they function in a believer's life. And as such, the blindness that God's sons still carry because they have not understood the function of bonds. And, and I will tell you, Anne and I have been on this specific road for 10 or 15 years when God began to reveal a real understanding to us. And you would say, well, we must, be, we must have this issue done, door closed. But it's not because it continues to plumb deeper and deeper and deeper. If there's anything in you that reacts to another, if there's any, any button that anything can be pushed with respect to people you know, relationships, family, whatever, then you're, 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 you're bonded, you're connected, you're tied in. And as such, your ability to see the Lord is severely hampered. So, going back to the dark months, we've called it that because we've watched it over the years and it's been because of the associations of the f call it family friends relatives whatever all of these associations that, that just kind of come up to the top and people just become so blinded because of the transference because of the blindness that are upon others and they themselves begin to walk in it and so consequently yes it's it's, it, it is the dark months, and for those 
whom the Lord has not brought out of this, it still is the dark, uh, the dark months because of the role that bonds have in an individual's life. So I would admonish you, as Anna and I do, continue to seek the Lord. Stay on your face before Him because as much as you may see, believe me, you don't see as you will. As much as Anna and I see, we still don't see as we are seeing each day, each week, each, I would say, level. Because our walk with God goes from level to level, you know, line upon line. You know, you, as you see Him, you're, you're changed, you're like Him. It's levels. And so every time there's an appearing, there's a release, there's an unwrapping, you go to another level. And when you get to that level, you cannot rest on your laurels of past achievements. You cannot look back and say, well, I read that word, I understood it, and I applied it, and I got it. And I would say, if that is your truth, yes, you did, on that level, but not on this new level. On this new level, it's a whole new playing field again. It's like opening up the word and saying, well, I've read 1 Corinthians 15. And I understand it. Yes, you did on that level. But when your eyes are open more, more wide, all of a sudden you see things you didn't see before. You understand where you didn't even see. You, you see answers to questions to, that you didn't even know there were questions there to ask. And so we go from level to level. And that's how the kingdom is manifesting. For, you know, it talks about it in the book of Matthew. First, the, the um, trying to think of how the, the, the it goes, but it has to do with the harvesting. First, the seed, the, the sickle. Uh, I don't have the, the quote offhand. But the kingdom of God manifests by layers or uh, by um, levels. And that is uh, not, uh, that is identical to how the kingdom is being revealed within us. It's through layer, level after level after level. It's the same thing. And so each time God brings you into another level, you have to go back and say, Okay, Lord, speak to me once again about bonds. Because it's a whole new playing field. You're going to see it much more deeply than you saw it before. And I can only tell you this because this is the path we have walked over the past specific 12 to 13 years when God removed us from religion, from churching, from churches, from pastoring, and began to reveal himself in us on a much deeper plane. And so it's been level after level after level after level. And you would say, well, Edward, don't you, you truly understand the bonds? You truly are walking free from it. And I would say, to a great degree we are, but with each layer, with each level, you might say with each level or with each layer that's removed, you see once again how you're still tied in, how you're still bonded in to people, to relationships, to individuals, to concepts, to theories, to past revelations, and you have to throw it off again. You have to come up higher. That's the path of sight. And of course, mixed in this bowl are the dealings of God in the fire. God has you in, in the frying pan. He throws in some more fire. And out of that comes vision, comes sight. And as you see, you, you go back over and, and the ground is fresh again. So I, I, I loose God's sons to really understand the dynamics that affect their ability to see. May none of us ever come to a point where we say, oh, I understand that. I got that one. Uh, in fact, I really got it. Let me tell you about it. Because our path is always on our knees. And yes, Lord, we see but we see just enough to know that we really don't see. Not as we ought. We only see in a glass dimly. 
is that as the scripture goes we see in part but we know when the fullness comes we'll see fully we're not quite there yet we're still in the part phase but it's part 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 line upon line upon line upon so I loose you in this pursuit to see to hear to know to understand to get a hold of the bonds a revelation of what they are of how all of this functions that you might walk and be free in Jesus name